A man police identified as Kevin Malazzo shot and killed four members of his own family in Corsicana. In the quiet town of Corsicana, Texas, a series of events unfolded that left a trail of devastation and shocked the entire world. This is the tragic tale of Kevin Malazzo, who shot down his five relatives to death. Come and delve into the chronicle of a man whose existence is tainted with lots of life-altering mysteries. Kevin Malazzo's fate all began significantly in the presence of his mom, Connie Mims. Mims, a 61-year-old woman born in 1960, cherished a lifetime with her family in their cozy home in Corsicana, Texas, nestled about 50 miles southeast of Dallas. Despite being originally from Dallas, Mims finished school at Navarro College in Corsicana, and years later, this is also where she brought her son, Malazzo, into the world, even though she and Malazzo's father had separated for undisclosed reasons. Mrs. Mims never ceased to shower her son with unwavering love and boundless pride. She was the kind of person who would spend hours on Facebook to fill her page with albums of family snapshots, moments of warmth and joy, such as during festive occasions like Christmas. She would also occupy her feed with posts that melded her beliefs in politics and religion. But above all, she used her digital presence to flaunt the close and caring connection she shared with her beloved son. Here are just some examples of Mrs. Mim's sweetness as Malazzo's mom. In 2014, she penned a heartfelt note. 33 years ago, I gave birth to my only son, Kevin. It's been a ride to remember. Some up, some down. But I wouldn't give you up for nothing. In 2019, Mrs. Mims took to Facebook once more, this time celebrating her grandson's, Malazzo's son, Milestone. To the most awesome grandson, Joshua Malazzo. He is 19 today. Happy birthday. You make me proud. Your heart is soft and our love for God is awesome. I love you. In another entry from 2020, Mrs. Mims expressed her gratitude for her son's gesture of making her a brisket. I love when I wake up and see sunshine. Truly a gift from God, she wrote. The year 2021 marked a special Facebook milestone, as well when Miss Mims playfully wished her husband, Bill Mims, a happy 38th anniversary. She fondly remarked that even though he was getting older and older, they still held each other's heart. Yes, Mrs. Mims' life was not intertwined solely with her sons. She also embarked on a second chapter when she married the 68-year-old William Bill Mims who then lovingly stepped into the role of Malazzo's stepfather for 38 years. Mim's union radiated the idyllic and nurturing partnership, evidently not only within the walls of their home, but also resonating through their tight-knit middle-class community. Their neighbors held warm memories of the two, describing them as generous souls who extended unconditional kindness to their neighbors. Every other day, Mrs. Mims would make homemade cookies, and a jovial Mr. Mims would ride his lawnmower around and bring his neighbors those sweets that his wife made. Through that simple act of kindness, he created an atmosphere of care and compassion in their neighborhood. Indeed, Mrs. Mims' life seems complicated yet undeniably perfect with the strokes of love and joy that she shared with those around her. But little did the Corsicana people know that this symphony of happiness will be abruptly silenced by the emergence of a heart-wrenching crime. On a fateful morning of February 5th, 2022, a distressing 911 call reached the Corsicana Police Department. Authorities swiftly responded to the emergency call, which horrifyingly reported a series of tragic events in which an unknown gunman had killed his family members during the early hours of that Saturday. The first incident was reported at a residence located at the 2900 block of West 2nd Avenue. Upon their arrival at the scene, officers discovered the lifeless bodies of an adult male and an adult female. Both were victims of gunshot wounds. Further inspection of the premises unveiled two additional victims who had suffered gunshot wounds. The police identify the deceased as Mr. and Mrs. Mims themselves, the mother and stepfather of Milazzo. Without hesitation, the injured victims were quickly transported via air ambulance to a specialized trauma center at the Dallas area. Just at the same moment, the Navarro County Sheriff's Department received reports of another alarming incident occurring approximately 20 miles away in Frost, Texas. There, the bodies of an adult male and a child were discovered. Police confirmed that these unfortunate victims were the 21-year-old Joshua Malazzo and 4-year-old Hunter Freeman. Both had succumbed to fatal gunshot wounds, according to the official police statement. 
Unfortunately, the investigation did not devolve into an intricate puzzle any more as detectives were able to swiftly trace and locate the suspect's vehicle through its GPS navigation system. The collaborative efforts of multiple law enforcement agencies searched for and intercepted the suspect's vehicle on FM 1129, just south of Rowan Road. Police instructed the monitoring service to remotely disable the vehicle's engine, which it successfully did. And as Corsicana SWAT officers cautiously approached the suspect vehicle after it was immobilized, a startling revelation emerged. One of the identified victims' very own son, Kevin Malazzo, is the prime suspect of the tragic multiple murder. However, just on the spot, he was found critically injured from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Immediate medical attention was administered at the scene, and Malazzo was subsequently transported via ambulance to Navarro Region Hospital. Tragically, he did not survive his injuries. Following the tragic loss of five lives, a sixth individual connected to what authorities termed a murder-suicide ultimately succumbed to injuries sustained in the violent incident. The Corsicana Police Department identified the last victim as Xavier Milazzo, the 20-year-old son of Milazzo. Xavier was removed from life support and declared deceased around 10 p.m. on Monday, February 7, 2022, at John Peter Smith Hospital. KKTV. In the wake of the event, the authorities released the names of the settled list of deceased victims. Kevin Malazzo, 41, the suspect. William Bill Mims, 68, Malazzo's stepfather. Connie Mims, 61, Malazzo's mother. Joshua Malazzo, 21, Malazzo's son. Hunter Freeman, the son of Malazzo's former girlfriend. Xavier Malazzo, 20, Malazzo's son. It was reported that there were three other individuals too that sustained injuries during the shootings, which unfolded in two separate locations. However, their identities were no longer disclosed by the authorities. The morning following the tragic shootings, the atmosphere on 2nd Avenue in Corsicana was solemn and melancholic. The once vibrant family residence in the middle-class neighborhood was surrounded by a hushed silence and the banging yellow crime scene tape as the material indication of police presence. While it might be deemed an advantage that the suspect is no longer alive, which thereby eliminated the complexities of trials and threats in the case, finding out the motive behind the murders remains bothersome for the authorities. Murder means the unlawful taking of human life without a valid cause, but still, every instance of one must indeed be triggered by something. Therefore, Further investigations were launched to examine the crime as the least way justice can be served. Partial findings discovered that it was Malazzo's former spouse who made the 911 call. Court recordings highlighted that it was her five-year-old son who had been a witness to the tragic events that transpired within the Corsicana residence. Fortunately for the child, physical harm was avoided. Then the quest is focused on how Malazzo executed the multiple murders all by himself. Yet this mystery was swiftly resolved as authorities uncovered both a handgun and a rifle from the suspect's property. The handgun was presumed to be the murder weapon. In light of that, it was later revealed that Malazzo was a previously convicted felon who was rendered ineligible to possess firearms. Although both weapons found were legally registered, the records failed to indicate the legitimate owners. Still, the most significant enigma of all remained unanswered. What compelled Malazzo to commit these harrowing acts of murder? Authorities delved further to search for a motive that had yet to emerge. Their inquiry led to Mrs. Mim's Facebook account. As they browsed her posts, they stumbled upon a December 2020 post where she wrote, Please pray for us all, especially Kevin, he is in a bad place. A friend asked, What is wrong with him, Connie? She replied, Satan. To another friend, she responded, on antibiotics, Kevin needs God. Satan torments him. While it is unwise to assume without the context of medical assistance, Mrs. Mim's comments hinted at his struggles with serious mental challenges during that period. Another crucial piece of evidence came in the form of testimony from Kim Felix, who resides two houses down from the site of the gunfire in Corsicana. She revealed that the couple living in the house had a son who had been grappling with mental illness for years. The Mims family, aside from Kevin, did not have any other children. And confirming this narrative, court records indicated that on the night of February 24th, 2022, the last Friday before their disappearance, one of the victims, Josh Malazzo, 
was meant to transport his father to a treatment facility. While detailed information regarding Malazzo's mental health issues has not been publicly disclosed, the confirmed details now lend credence to the reason behind the murders. It is conceivable that his intricate mental state played a pivotal role in this tragic event. Hence, this also provides insight into why Kevin Malazzo subsequently took his own life as law enforcement approached him on a county road. Nevertheless, the pursuits of the police force did not solely culminate with the revelation of Malazzo's mental struggles. Their inquiries extended further, leading to the discovery that Kevin James Malazzo had an extensive history of arrests, as documented by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Kevin Malazzo's timeline of criminal activity spans several years, depicting a pattern of recurring run-ins with the law. It all began on August 3, 1999, when he was arrested for assault resulting in bodily injury. As reported by the Corsicana Police Department, although a misdemeanor, he was found guilty and sentenced to six months of confinement. Just a few weeks later, on August 16, 1999, Malazzo found himself in more serious trouble as he was apprehended for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, a felony of the second degree. The Corsicana Police Department recorded this offense, and while a deferred misdemeanor count accompanied it, he still had to endure a year behind bars. As time went on, Malazzo's encounters with law enforcement continued. On October 20, 2000, he was arrested by the Navarro County Sheriff's Office for misdemeanor marijuana possession. His conviction led to six months of confinement that extended his criminal record. The year 2001 yet again brought another charge on his journey for misdemeanor possession of marijuana by the Corsicana Police. Once again, he faced conviction and a punishment of four months of court confinement. His life of crime further continued with an arrest of criminal mischief, a misdemeanor, on March 27, 2002. This time he received four months of court confinement. In the same year, on September 11, a significant shift in Malazzo's crime record was marked when he was arrested for aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury, a felony. Mexia police also charged him with burglary of a habitation. While he was convicted of the latter charge, which the prosecution changed the offense to, he was still handed a year of confinement. Just after taking a 2003 hiatus, 2004 saw Malazzo being arrested for driving while his license was suspended by the Navarro County Sheriff's Office. He faced confinement time for this misdemeanor offense. A year later, on July 20th, 2005, he was apprehended once more for evading arrest, a felony by the Corsicana police. His punishment was 18 months of confinement. Not long after, Malazzo was arrested yet again for driving with an invalid license by the Corsicana police. This recurring misdemeanor offense led to additional confinement time. His loud journey continued on October 14, 2005, with another arrest for driving with an invalid license. This time, too, he was given confinement time, illustrating a distressing cycle of repeated criminal behavior. The timeline resumes on May 1, 2006, when he was arrested again for driving with an invalid license by the Navarro County Sheriff's Department. This initial offense set the tone for his future interactions with law enforcement. Just over a month later, on June 6, 2006, he found himself in trouble for evading arrest, a misdemeanor, by the Navarro County Sheriff's Office. His punishment included six months of confinement time. The cycle continued, as on the very same day, June 6, 2006, Malazzo was once more caught driving with an invalid license, this time by the county attorney's office in Corsicana. Unsurprisingly, he was convicted and sentenced to further confinement time. The year 2012 brought no respite from his criminal activities as on April 16th, he was again arrested for driving with an invalid license, leading to yet another period of confinement. As if the vehicular offenses weren't enough, December 12th, 2012 marked a different kind of transgression as he faced an arrest for violation of the Clean Air Act by the Navarro County Sheriff's Office. This showed a shift from his traffic-related offenses to something more environmental. However, the theme of his actions remained consistent, as on February 1st, 2012, he was arrested once more for driving with an invalid license by Corsicana Police Department. The year 2013 proved to be particularly eventful in Malazzo's timeline of crime. On August 30th, he was arrested not once, but twice by Corsicana PD. First, for a terroristic threat, classified as a misdemeanor, which resulted in yet another period of confinement time, 
Then, later on, the same day, he faced arrest for evading arrest once more, a fitting symbol of his repeated attempts to escape the consequences of his actions. Malazzo's life again took a tumultuous turn on December 2nd, 2014, when he found himself in the grip of the law. The Corsicana Police Department apprehended him for assaulting a family member, an act that left him facing a misdemeanor charge. The court's judgment decreed 150 days of confinement, setting the tone for what was to come. As the years rolled on, Kevin's run-ins with the law continued to escalate. On March 8, 2016, the Navarro County Sheriff's Office added another blot to his record, this time charging him with the serious offense of unlawful possession of a firearm as a felon. The felony convicted bore the weight of five years of confinement, a harsh sentence that spoke to the severity of his actions. Unfazed by his previous encounters with law enforcement, Malazzo found himself entangled in yet another incident. September 30th, 2016 marked the day he was arrested by the Dallas police for resisting arrest. The consequences were swift and succinct, 30 days of confinement, a brief period that did little to deter his growing list of transgressions. However, the turning point arrived on November 1st, 2020, when a dual clash with the law further marred his reputation. First, the Navarro County Sheriff's Office caught him driving while intoxicated, cementing his recklessness behind the wheel. This time, the punishment mounted to two months and 20 days of confinement, a sobering stint that failed to fully sober him up. But Malazzo's defiance persisted, as evidenced by his subsequent arrest on the same day, once again for resisting arrest, this time by the Navarro County Sheriff's Office. The court's decision echoed his persistent defiance, condemning him to 80 days of confinement, a significant chunk of time that underscored the gravity of his actions. Despite multiple opportunities at parole, Malazzo continued to tread the wrong path. His brushes with the legal system had left an indelible mark on his timeline, culminating in his most recent parole period that stretched until October 3, 2021. Aftermath of Quintuple Murder-Suicide Incident A fundraising barbecue event was arranged to commence at 5 p.m. on Saturday, February 12th, at the VFW Post located at 4609 Highway 31 in Corsicana. The purpose of this event was to gather funds to cover both funeral and medical expenses. Despite the well-intentioned efforts to provide assistance to families like that of Patty Freeman, the former girlfriend of the suspect and the mother of Hunter, no amount of compensation can truly encapsulate the depth of anguish they underwent. Their loss transcended mere familial ties. They lost their happiness. They lost their dreams. They lost their zest for life. Most of the victims' friends and relatives turned to social media as a platform to express their grief. A poignant sentiment emerged on a GoFundMe page dedicated to Xavier and Joshua Malazzo, where a family member wrote, These young men illuminated our world and harbored immense potential for the future. Meanwhile, Joshua Malazzo's employer, Oil City Ironworks, paid a virtual tribute to him on the following Monday, Valentine's Day 2022. The post noted, Josh, just three months shy of his 22nd birthday, recently celebrated his second anniversary as a security guard, a hardworking man. He often showed up early for his evening shifts. He always had a friendly disposition, greeting everyone with a hello and a smile. Heaven has a special place for gems like Josh. May you rest in peace. Your work family will truly miss you. Dr. Jim Hall, Patty Freeman's employer, took to Facebook as well to express his sentiments. He mournfully acknowledged, prayers for one of my nurses, who was brutally shot and her young son murdered. He stated, lives lost needlessly to pure evil, Patty's hanging by a thread. In the wake of this unimaginable tragedy, Corsicana, Texas was left grappling with the aftermath of Kevin Malazzo's actions. It's distressing, yet we hope that beyond all the anger, what prevails is the enlightenment that Incidents like the crime can occur when mental health issues are not duly addressed. No one may be able to dictate the right time to move on from the lives lost, the wounds inflicted, and the community forever changed by the events. But may this documentary serve as a reminder that even in the face of unspeakable horror, the strength of a community can shine through.